And welcome again to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host for this segment. And with me today is Heather Freeman, uh, Master Gardener Coordinator. That's correct. Yes, I got that right. So today we're going to be talking about a plant, a shrub called the oleander, uh, one of our topics. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the uh, dreaded salt cedar, another plant, a noxious weed that is lovely. People like planting them, pruning them, but they're extremely deadly to plants uh, and uh, the environment. Uh, but we won't get into that because we did that two weeks ago. Now the oleander is another lovely plant. It's a, it makes great hedgerows. And let me read this paragraph from the, the fact sheet from the Cooperative Extension. If you're looking at fact sheets, it's 01-54. You could find that online like I did. So the oleander is a durable shrub that adds beauty to the landscape. Its ability to, to succeed in difficult environments makes it desirable shrub for many sites. Education and precautions are the best approaches to minimizing the dangers of oleander. If you're looking for them, uh, you want to see a good example of them go up to Preferred Equities uh, RV Park on uh, 360 and, uh, 372 and 160. They have two large rows, probably around 12, 15 feet tall. They've been growing there for many years. They're a perfect example of manicured oleanders. But you don't have little kids there. You don't have animals over there. And they make a great um, uh, fence. Uh, and but what shouldn't you do with oleanders? Why are they bad? Okay, so oleanders contain compounds that are really poisonous. Um, if you are working with oleanders, you for sure want to wear gloves, long sleeves, long pants, um, a mask, eye protection. Um, if you get any of the sap on your skin, it could cause contact dermatitis. And you for sure do not want to uh, chip, mulch, compost, or burn oleander um, cuttings. It's, they're just very poisonous. Um, if you have horses, goats, livestock, dogs, cats, um, children, people, um, it's just very, they're very poisonous to people and animals. So, um, if you inherited a landscape, maybe you just moved in here from out of town and there's oleanders planted. Um, if you have animals or children, you might want to consider removing them uh, carefully and making sure that they go to the proper place up at the Knight County Landfill on East Mesquite. It's open eight to four, seven days a week. Um, if you enjoy your oleanders, just be really careful with them. Um, one of the things about oleanders is they can freeze. Uh, not all of them are frost hardy. The only way to know for sure is to check the Latin name on the tag at the nursery if you're purchasing new oleanders um, to make sure that it is a cultivar that is frost hardy. Um, and you can find information, as John said, on our website at extension.unr. Edu. Uh, we have many other fact sheets, and another place to find the fact sheets is at the Pahrump Farmers Market. The Master Gardeners have a booth there. Um, our graphic is up. It's Pahrump Farmers Market at gmail.com. Um, if you have questions about Farmer's Market, it's open 7.30 to 11 on Saturday mornings. Right, over at the Tractor Supply. At Tractor Supply, thanks. Yes. <clears throat> and you have the ability to purchase, let's say, honey. You have um, biscuits, rolls, vegetables. You have, uh, what else do you have there? Um, yes, yeah, so we have several uh, fresh produce vendors. So if you are going shopping on Saturday morning, start at Tractor Supply. You might be able to um, pick up all your fresh produce or a great deal of it there. Um, 
We have the cottage food bakers. We also have some really unique artists and artisans, um, glass creations, um, outdoor furniture. Uh, if anything you might need for kitchen linens, um, we have some sewists that create things from uh, yarn. We also have uh, unique homemade gifts. So if you wanna get something that no one else would have, uh, farmer's market's a good place to look. I am particularly in love with the almond pastries from the one lady or, or mm -hmm. yes. So, yep. but you have to get there early yeah, because they go rather quickly. And in the next week or two, uh -huh. some of the vendors will be having fresh grown tomatoes. So you'll definitely want to be there at 730 to get the tomatoes. They, they tend to sell out right away. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Yep. What are some of the other vegetables we can find there? Green peppers or no? Um, it's one? not quite pepper season yet. Right now we're finishing up on the fresh greens. Um, there's a vendor that specializes in microgreens. Um, there's another one that has really good root crops. Um, he grows a particular type of white turnip that is really, really tasty and mild. Um, so that's lots of good fresh produce to eat. So the summer hours are 7.30? 7.30 to 11, yep. 11, yes. Um, we're also coming up on the season to be reaching out to recruit new Master Gardener class. Um, that's going to begin August 4th. This year it will be all online for the delivery part. And um, once a week there will be a question and answer session live with professors. So um, they call it a flipped, con a flipped classroom model. Uh, that allows people that work during the day when the lectures normally were held usually nine to noon during the day. And if you're still in the workaday world, um, this allows you to log in at your own time and absorb the content, study however you wish. If you have screen reader, you can have the content read to you. There'll be small embedded videos um, as far as the lectures, and you'll have access to go back and rewatch um, however you need. And then once a week, you can log in live with the professors and ask your questions. Now you're located, the extension office is located at Six, Calvada. Okay. Yeah, 1651 East Calvada. That's the corner of Calvada and Dandelion. That's the only way that I'll remember it. I won't remember the number. Yeah. Um, and we have the prompt desert demonstration garden open yeah. um, dawn till dusk. So during daylight hours, if you want a cool green place to walk in the morning, um, open at sunup. Uh, and you, you got a little Everett there too? We do. We just got done resetting the stone, so if you want a quiet place to walk and meditate, um, there's a labyrinth that we just got done redesigning and reset the stones this week. Um, it's a wonderful place to just kind of go and be calm and quiet. Yes. So those are some of the things that we have that you have to offer. Do you have other classes too that go on there? There are, yes. Um, there's a series called Gardening in Small Spaces and another series called Growing Under the Stars with Master Gardeners. Um, and that information you can obtain off our website or at Farmer's Market. Um, or if you're on Eventbrite, you can follow the organizer, Elaine Fagan, um, and you can sign up for those classes. Uh, the small spaces classes are on Saturday mornings and the gardening or growing under the stars are usually on a Wednesday or Thursday night and they're available on Zoom. Oh, true. Does ML still come out there? He does, yep. Um, ML Robinson, who's been on this program uh, many times, he does weird things with cacti and uh, other, other plants. He has fun uh, making them look different. But he, he's a master at what, what he does. Yes, he knows horticulture like yeah. the back of his hand. And um, the next time he comes out, he uh, wants to bring back the beekeeping classes. Um, the 
beekeepers that presented in October and again in January um, are going to come back out and do another intro class. And then the second day, they're, they've got their part two. So if any of you were participants in the previous two sessions out here, you might be interested in signing up for part two. And more information to come on that. And if I wanted to reach you via the old-fashioned telephone? Um, it's 775-727-5532. But a better way to reach us is the email okay. that was um, on the screen, which was... We'll bring that up again, please. Uh, there it is. Extension S9MG at unr.edu. Well, thank you. We're into uh, our final minute or so. And uh, are there any final thoughts? Do you have anything that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I think we covered most of it. Yep. The dreaded oleander. Please yeah. Just don't go out there and buy them and plant them, uh, especially if you have kids, if you have animals. Uh, we don't have kids at home, but we have animals. So I have I've been told by my wife that I cannot plant those. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, it's one of the few things that grows well and grows easily here. But once you know it, it it's something that's uh, not, not good for you. Um, you have a lot of plants over there that you could show the people what do grow. We do. So um, we've been retagging most of the trees and shrubs and plants, and we don't have any oleanders planted at the extension property. Um, but very good. We have other good flowering things. So, do you have plans for this weekend? This weekend, uh, I just want to mention the South Point offers a free buffet for all active military and veterans uh, and to honor them on Memorial Day, Monday, May 30th. Uh, I know it'll, it'll cost you 40 bucks to get there, uh, but the fact that the, the owner, Michael Gaugan, does something like that, he's the only owner of a uh, casino a hotel that gives back to the, the people. I know it's your money to begin with, but anyway, he does that. It, and it's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can go for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And uh, I just like to go there because he does something like that. No questions asked. And uh, I appreciate what he does to honor all the veterans. So thank you for what you do, Michael. Thank you for coming with us on this trip, and we'll see you next week.